Hi, I'm Aniket and today I'm here to swap my diets with a professional tasty chef. Hey guys, I'm Ryan and I'm a tasty producer from Australia. So that means that I'm cooking between the hours of 9 to 5, Monday to Friday. And then when I get home, I'm basically cooking every other hour. I am going to be challenging Aniket to upgrade his culinary skills. I find it very therapeutic to go and cook something and then to be able to eat it. And I'm going to get him to cook some tricky dishes with what we regularly eat in Australia. I, in turn, am going to cook some Indian dishes, which I've got no idea what I'm about to be making. I am not half as good as what Ryan is. It's all about getting your hands dirty in the kitchen, having a vibe and enjoying yourself. This is my moment. I am going to win it. Yes, I'm so excited. Let's do this. For Aniket's menu, I'm giving him for breakfast Eggs Benedict. It's something that you would order at a cafe, but you wouldn't make yourself at home. It sounds fancy and it was. I'm so excited for my menu for Ryan because for breakfast he's getting kande pohe with chai. It kind of sounds like candy. So the ingredients for the egg benedict were something that would be available in my house but steps bought zyada hai sadly. First thing on the menu is kanda poha which are these rice flakes. The second ingredient that was new to me was one called hing. It kind of looks like a toxic substance. You know what the first step to cooking is? It's not ingredients, it's bhande ghasne. The easy section was toasting the bread. So I laid up the baguette in my oven tray, put it in the oven, out of sight, out of mind. That's it, done, right? The dish was actually quite simple to make. All I had to do was chop up some onions, ugh, fry them in some oil, and it didn't take too much effort. So I assumed that all the cooking I was doing was going to be really tough and challenging. It was nice and simple, easy going. Then I started with my hollandaise sauce, which is egg yolks, lemon juice and salt. I hope I don't break the yolk already here, then it will be too much of a problem. All the white separated and all the yolk was just in one corner. It was quite a mess. The whole process was so tricky and it took me so much time and so many eggs. <sighs> like a surgery. Oh see, this is the perfect one. Now hollandaise is so tricky to make because you have to heat the butter and while the mixie is doing grrr, you have to add the butter so that the eggs inside the mixie cook with the heat of the heated butter. Not bad for the first time. Now let's just put the sridhar in. I had to keep shutting the mixie, putting a little bit of the butter and then starting it again. It is thick, it has worked, the eggs have cooked in the hot butter. I think the holidays turned out really, really well. It is so good. Okay, it's time to make Anakit's chai. This is totally unique. This is totally not the Australian experience. While I was doing the holidays, the oven went ding. Gone. <laughs> and I realized I have burnt my bread. <sighs> This was the easiest step, but it's burnt. Should have paid more attention. Okay, not bad. I can use this one. And that really brought my confidence down. So now we're poaching the eggs. Poaching eggs is like an art in itself. How am I so bad with eggs today? Cracked one egg and it did not work. So then I used a trick. I took the ladle that you use to serve dal with. I oiled it up. I cracked open my egg inside the ladle and I just gently lowered it in the boiling water and held it on for like 20 minutes until the egg cooked. Look ma, no hands. <laughs> it was a little harder than I thought it would be, but it was poached enough for the golden yolk to fall when I cut it open. It's not perfect, but it's mine. Aww. The rest of the stuff is pretty easy. The dish looked extremely gourmet. It's like a massive plate and like one small thing in the middle with like multiple layers. So it looked really, really pretty. So we have here the flat rice dish, also the chai. I'm very excited to dive into this. So good. Yum. Not bad for my first go at all, actually. And every mouthful I got of the dish, it had this crunchy texture to it. This is something that could grow on me. It doesn't taste like a tea I would usually go for. I think I would make this again, but I will replace the poached egg with a sunny side up. So for lunch, Ryan gave me something called a poke bowl. I did not get anything from that name apart from that it will be some kind of a bowl. But when I saw the recipe, it looked like it's like a deconstructed sushi. For lunch, I had sambar and rice. This one had like a bajillion ingredients in it. Anika, what are you trying to make me do? So the ingredients for this one were so all over the place. So there was sushi rice, there was rice wine vinegar, avocados, pineapples, a lot of things which I don't generally cook 
cook with, but I was really excited to explore these new ingredients. Step one to making samba, we need to make the lentils. I thought I'll get the basic thing done first, which is cook the rice. I have not worked with sushi rice before. I think it's a little hard, needs a little more cooking time. So it was a little difficult to gauge kitna pani chahiye, kitna deer rakhna hai. I feel like my rice is going really off track. Now let me check. I was just eyeballing it. It's rice. Matlab, how wrong can you go? And it is done. Okay, we're starting the samba. One thing I loved about it is that you could personalize it. So I made sure that the ingredients I included were things that I liked. This is what the dish is named after. The dish itself is a watery soup with like a slight tang. It's like kind of sour and mild on the spice scale. Then I thought I will finish the other big section, which was the chicken. I like my big knife. It's so nice and so convenient. Chicken I cut up, washed. I don't know how much any of these ingredients should be, so I'm just going to eyeball it. GG paste, a little extra because we are Indian. I put all the sauces and vinegar and whatever needed to be put for the marinade. Ooh, it smells so good. I will keep this in the fridge to marinate. Okay, we will just put the edamame in the chaha bhanda and then steam them for like three minutes. It was time to assemble the other toppings. The main part, cooking the potatoes and the chicken. The first topping, I thought I would do the sweet potato. It just needed to be cubed. This is now ready to go in the oven and waiting time begins. Which I thought was an easy process, but I have done a mistake. The chicken has released a lot of juice. And now all the sweet potato are wet and soggy and they won't turn out as well as I would like them. One minute of silence for that sweet potato because I had to let it go. So while I was making this dish, I am not certain that I hit the authenticity mark 100%. Okay, time to plate. All the other toppings were pretty easy and chill because you just needed to like chop them and put them on the bowl. Plating wise, I think the bowl looked really, really pretty. There's like so many things going on. I can't wait to dig in. Yum. Woo. It's kind of like sinigang, which is a Filipino soup. Same family, different flavors. When you take the first bite, it's difficult to figure out what you want because there's so many things and you can't fit everything on your chopsticks. I've come all the way here to learn how to use chopsticks and everything. To taste Aniket's food, so. There are no rules to this. So it was like a beautiful experience because every bite is new. Good effort by Aniket. He has proved himself well. He could be a professional chef. I need to try this again, but Anika, you need to cook it for me. So for dinner, Ryan gave me something called pesto papardelle. I did not know what that meant apart from the pesto part. It is going to teach Anika how to make pasta from scratch. So for dinner, I made chicken curry with naan. So it's now dinner time. I have to make the pasta from scratch and then two sauces. So it's going to be a mix of maida and semolina, eggs, some olive oil and some salt. So I added the maida, added the semolina and some olive oil, eggs. The eggs have left the building, the dam is broken and eggs are everywhere but it's okay Sab saath mein to milana hai baad mein. then i've started to mix it something is not working out this is not supposed to be this add a little more flour and then keep kneading it i guess it was such a mess i think i just needed to like keep at it and gundo and gundo and gundo it's finally ready look how springy it is it came together like a really nice ball this needs to rest in the fridge for half an hour and then we'll come back to it our dough is ready and it's time to roll. I should cut these into four parts and then roll each of them. It was a little difficult to make the roti with and then cut it up. It was difficult to make it thin enough so that it's transparent. So it was not transparent, but it was close enough. Okay, I will coil it up from here. At this point, I had already done two dishes throughout the day. So I was feeling more confident. These just need to go into boiling water and we are done. Looks like our pasta is all done. I also made naan. So this is everything we need to make naan bread. So a unique ingredient that is in the naan bread is this kalonji. Now I've never tasted it before, but it looks like black sesame seeds. In my mind, I was terrified that I was going to screw it up. I wasn't gonna do it justice and it was gonna come out out like hard and flat. Making naan is at first laborious. You just need a bit of time on your hands. It took me about 10 minutes to roll the dough and at the end my arm did fall like it was going to fall off. This can go into a bowl and let it rest for about two hours.
hours and then you come back to it and you roll it out and fry it. It's nice and simple. Just make sure you put it on hot heat so that it puffs up. You'll get some stretchy, chewy, fluffy naan. It's kind of borderline scary to make, but if you've got some confidence in you, you can do it. Now we are on to an easier step, which is making the pesto sauce. Palak, basil, salt, pepper, cashews, lemon juice, garlic and Parmesan cheese. Put them all in a mixy and blend, blend, blend. What a beautiful little pesto. But I knew pesto would be an easy task, so I wasn't worried about that. The bechamel sauce was a little tricky. So we need some butter, maida, mozzarella cheese, milk, and Parmesan cheese. Ryan made this recipe on camera and I'm constantly looking at it. I've looked at this recipe like 200 times by now. His recipe had mozzarella cheese and no seasoning. Followed the recipe, I put in the mozzarella cheese, it was becoming really nice and thick. Okay, so I added a little bit of pepper just to give it a bit of a kick. I think another 5 or 10 minutes and it'll be done. Both the sauces turned out well and then I mixed the pesto in the bechamel and that also looked so nice and brightly green. I was happy with my result. So when I was looking at the ingredients in front of me, I thought I knew what this curry would taste like. But I'm telling you now, I had no idea what was coming to me. <sighs> This never gets easy. Cooking this curry, it's actually not super complex. It had a curry paste made from chili and cashews and I made that all from scratch. It had like a mixture of spices, which is so fragrant and they spiced up my kitchen. It was on fire. This dish was totally different to any type of style of curry that I've made in the past. Plating wise, I think I cooked my pasta perfectly. It turned out beautiful. So I loved that I could tear it apart and dunk it in the sauce and just enjoy it all together. I did not expect myself to pull this off. It's got flavors that I think people would love and it's super delicious. So take it from me. Indian food is not what I thought it was. There is a whole lot of flavor to unpack. Which it did not disappoint, but it did not like a point also. <laughs> I got to make all the, um, what is it called? Fruits are like candy from the universe, so it should be free. I've just got the flattened rice flakes here. I wonder if I could eat them. That's not meant to be consumed raw. <laughs> oh. If you like this video, then don't forget to let us know in the comments which dish you liked and subscribe to BuzzFeed India and BuzzFeed Oz. We're on all the social platforms, so come follow us. We love ya.